now we are going to read about the second part of the acquired immunity where i will be discussing about the active immunity if you remember active immunity was a type of acquired immunity where the host immune system was getting actively involved in producing the resistance against a particular microorganism or a antigen now that active immunity response is classified into the primary immune response and the secondary immune response this is based upon whether the exposure to the antigen or the microorganism is for the first time or it is a subsequent exposure if the exposure is for the first time then the immune response that we get is called as the primary immune response and if the exposure is a subsequent exposure then the immune response that we get is called as the secondary immune response so these are the two types of immune responses that we get in the active immunity now the events that happens during this primary or the secondary immune response that we will be understanding by a graph let's understand the graph here this is a very important graph in the immunology so uh, on the y axis we have plotted the antibody titer and on the x axis we have plotted the time here now whenever there is the first time exposure to the antigen then what we get is the primary immune response then we get the primary immune response now before understanding this uh, graph let's first understand the sequence of events that occur whenever there is exposure to the antigens so first of all suppose we have got this antigen here okay we have got this antigen here and this antigen has got entry in our body this antigen has got entry in our body now in our body what happens the anti uh, the apcs the apcs in engulf these antigens and will present that to the t cells and after that there will be a presentation to the b cells also so there is activation of the t cells and the b cells okay so there is activation of the t cells and the b cells t and b cells so those will be called as the effector t cells and the effector b cells so they are forming the effector t cells and the effector b cells okay the effector t cells and the effector b cells now the b cells also forms the memory b cells okay now the effector b cells are called as the plasma cells okay if you remember from pathology it is called as the plasma cell now these two cells start acting against these plasma cells start producing the antibodies and these effector t cells which are nothing but the cytotoxic t cells they start killing the microorganism or help in that process so we are seeing that uh, till the production of the antibodies till the production of the antibodies there is some time lag occurring if you see there is a time lag from here to here there is a time lag from here to here and this time lag till the uh, that is from entry of the antigen into the body till the production of the effector t cells the, uh, the effector b cells this time lag is nothing but the latent phase is nothing but the latent phase which is also called as the lag phase okay so in this lag phase there is activation of the immune system there is activation of the t cells there is activation of the b cells okay now once there is activation of these uh, cells then what happens the antibody titer starts rising the antibody titer starts rising see here the antibody titer is see here the antibody titer is increasing there is there is a steep rise in the antibody titer and after certain time there is a constant in the antibody level there is a constant in the antibody level this is uh, uh, why is this so so this is because the these effector t cells and the effector b cells are not going to live for lifetime okay they are going to die soon so once they die the antibody titer which is present in the blood that becomes constant so see here this is a constant antibody titer okay this is constant this has got a constant level and after these uh, cells has uh, died and the uh, the first antigen exposed uh, i mean the first exposure to the antigen which has happened that has been tackled with the immune system then the antibody titer starts to decrease but while decreasing it maintains a low level it maintains a low level see here this is maintaining a low level this is maintaining a low level here okay this is slightly above the base level okay this is slightly above the base level so it is maintaining a low level of antibody after that when there is subsequent antigenic exposure then what happens that the lag phase is very small see here the lag phase is very small 
why is this so this is because now we do not have to start right from here we have the memory b cells already formed for us we have already the memory b cells we will we will directly start from here okay we do not need to start from here we do not need to start from here okay we are directly going to start from the memory b cells so that's why this lag phase has reduced here okay that's why the la lag phase has been reduced here now there was uh, then the second phase in the subsequent ex i mean the in the secondary immune response is the negative phase so what happens why is this negative phase is there so this is because the low level of antibody titer that was maintaining after the first antigenic exposure that uh, antibody titer starts decreasing when there is subsequent exposure because those low level of antibody antibodies they start to act against the antigen when there is second time exposure okay and hence the amount of the uh, antibody in the blood start decreasing that causes this negative phase until the time this negative phase occurs then the memory b cells is, gets activated and they start producing the antibodies and they start producing the antibodies and then then we see the this steep rise again this steep rise uh, rise in the antibody titer again that we see is due to the memory b cell in the secondary immune response okay so this steep rise then we see due to the memory b cells and then again there is a constant reached and uh, we get a particular level of antibody titer in our body okay so this is the whole uh, events that we see in the primary immune response and the secondary immune response so if we divide this uh, if we divide this then we can divide from here okay we can divide from here so from here to here this is the primary immune response and here it is the secondary immune response in the primary immune response there was first antigenic exposure then there was latent phase in which the effector b cells and the effector t cells were getting produced and then uh, the b cells were started producing antibodies due to which there was this rise in the antibody titer and then since the b cells cannot live for life long so uh, the antibody level reaches to a maximum and becomes constant so this is the constant that we get this is the constant that we get and after the b cells has died and the infection or the microorganism or the antigen has been tackled off then the antibody level start decreasing so this is the so this is the decrease in the antibody titer this is the decrease in the antibody titer but it maintains a low level but it maintains a low level here okay so as it is maintaining the low level when there is subsequent exposure when there is subsequent exposure then what happens those uh, small amount of antibodies which were already present in the blood due to the first exposure those start acting against that antigen and they are getting uh, i mean used up and uh, and and as they are getting used up so they are occurs this negative phase okay so this antibody titer decreases here this antibody titer decreases here okay so that's why this negative phase occurs and in meantime when this negative phase is occurring the memory b cells the memory b cells get activated as a result the antibody titer again start increasing steeply and then it becomes constant at a high level and we get a constant antibody titer after that which is higher than the first antigenic exposure so this is the whole sequence uh, of event events that we see in the primary immune response and the secondary immune response i hope i would have been able to make you understand about this all now let's uh, read about that in theoretical way so see here we have the primary immune response and the secondary immune response so primary immune response occurs after the first time antigenic exposure and the secondary immune response occurs after the subsequent antigenic exposure then in the primary immune response as we have seen already ever in the graph that the latent phase is longer why because we have to start right from beginning there will be uh, activate there will be uh, apcs coming then they will be presenting to t cells then uh, there will be activation of the t and the b cells formation of effector t cell effector b cells then uh, then the b cells will produce plasma cells then there will be uh, production of antibody so this is taking a long amount of time so that's why there is longer latent phase why in case of secondary immune response it is a shorter or absent latent phase why because here we are starting directly from the memory b cells okay we do not need apcs again here right from beginning 
so we are directly using the memory b cells memory b cells know that i have got the exposure to this antigen previously i know how to make the antibodies against this so memory cells will directly start producing the antibodies so the uh, the latent phase will be decreased or there will be absent latent phase okay then there is no negative phase in the primary immune response why why is there no negative phase because there is no already formed antibodies na in the primary uh, immune response but in case of secondary immune response there is already a low level of titer maintaining in the blood low level of antibody titer is maintaining in the blood due to the first immune response that antibodies low level of antibodies they get used up in the secondary immune response that cause a decrease in the antibody titer initially so that's why we see the negative uh, phase in the secondary immune response initially na so the negative uh, phase is present in case of secondary immune response but it is absent in the primary immune response then the primary immune response is slow and short lived because there were no memory cells but in the secondary immune response we have fast and prolonged uh, immune response okay in the secondary immune response there is it is fast and prolonged why because there was memory b cells and see there was more amount of production of antibodies the rise in the the rise in this uh, antibody titer was more as compared to the primary immune response which was this much okay which was this much so as compared to this this is bigger so it is fast and prolonged okay then it is igm type of antibody in the primary immune response while in case of secondary immune response it is ig type of antibody is getting produced now antibody titer is low in case of primary immune response and antibody titer is high in the secondary immune response this is quite evident from the graph also as i have explained then in the primary immune response the naive b cells are the main cells which are producing the antibodies while in secondary immune response all plays are being done by the memory b cells okay so memory b cells are producing the antibodies they are in the secondary immune response so this is all about the primary and the secondary immune response this is very important from university exam point of view you should must remember this graph you should must remember this uh, whole of the graph okay this whole of the graph you should must remember you should must remember this whole of the graph okay this is very very important plus you should also remember this difference this difference is very commonly very 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 commonly asked in the university exam so please remember this difference also and never forget to make the graph while uh, uh, you know while uh, making this difference okay while uh, writing about this difference because if you write only write this difference and not make a graph you will give uh, you will get only half marks because if it is uh, i mean if it is a question of five marks then you will give uh, you will get only two and half if you only write this difference and not make graph so you have to make the graph also and write the differences also then only you will be getting four or 4.5 uh, out of 5 okay otherwise not so this is very important question you should must prepare this question and this is quite easy also if you just remember the graph then you will be good to go to write about this difference in the university exams or uh, about short notes also you can also write this short note if it is asked this is quite easy from the graph as, uh, itself so that's all for this immune responses that we see in the active immunity